Hello, YouTubers. This is another session where Sam and I continue developing OData Neo. In the last session, Sam and I worked a little bit further into the O expression service. We got kind of the happy path out of the way. And, you know, Sam, today we're going to do a little bit of validations just to make sure the input parameters are in good shape. How are you doing, my friend? All good? I'm doing good. School um, season started. You're a little bit busy these days? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> max. So the first <laughs> week, mm -hmm. um, a lot of things to do. A lot of things to do, right? <laughs> yeah, to, to make sure the schedule is okay for, you know, the first week of uh, of, of long, uh, school is really mixed. Uh, so right. so it, it's really busy. Um, okay. But now it's, it's, it's back to normal. Okay, you're back in business then. You know, so so your Fridays, your Fridays are busy still at eight a.m. Um, the latest schedule says um, uh, eight a.m. to nine a.m. Um, I'm That's busy okay. for the school stuff. Okay, uh, but um, after that it's okay. So start okay. from nine a.m. Mm -hmm. It's okay, but at Wednesday, um. Um, it's different. It's different. Uh, it just uh, um, it, it's uh, Wednesday is normal because but uh, uh, Wednesday school school uh, uh -huh. time at Wednesday is abnormal. So it it turns out I'm we are back to normal at uh, Wednesday morning. So Sounds good. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we can um, reschedule the session. Uh, for Monday and Friday, but uh, we can keep the schedule for Wednesday. Sounds good, my friend. Sounds good. Okay, here's what we're going to do today. Um, uh, what we're going to do, let me share my screen here. We have the happy path, right? So we got the, um, the we got the uh, should generate O expression, right? We kind of picked up the on generate O expression, we basically went and said, hey, take the, we have a bunch of comments here, probably need to clean those up, but uh, let's see, let's take this out. No comments, Sam, no comments across the code, okay? We're doing this right. So control KE, let's go here, this is this, I'm just gonna go. That's, uh, top, so that's one of the topic in the standard, no comments for code. No comments except for exposure where you don't have access to the code and on your test. Like for instance, if, if we're building a client, the customer doesn't have access to this code, right? So they don't know how it works, right? Even if even if the code is open source, you know, the customer doesn't have access to it, right? So we kind of need to help them kind of understand what the method is doing. The same thing applies to Swagger documents. When you're building an, an API and you have a post and Git and all that, you should put comments there. That's okay. Comments in your internal services where engineers can read the code, that's a problem. Why is that? Because, you know, your code should be self-documenting. It should be easy enough, simple enough, you know, to explain itself, right? Once people start putting the comments, you start seeing all kinds of craziness. And the scary thing about these comments is that, that's a good topic, by the way, you know, the scary thing about these top, uh, comments is that they go outdated. Like someone leaves a comment in there, right? And then it gets outdated. And then, you know, sometimes engineers kind of have a little bit of fun with their comments. Let me show you a couple of uh, funny things in here. <laughs> uh, in the comments, you'll see some engineers go like this here. So if you go and say funny code comments, it becomes kind of a, um, there it is. So check this out. <laughs> <laughs> when I wrote this, only God and I understood what I was doing. Now only God knows what this code is doing. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm not sure if we need this, but too scared to delete. Dear maintainer, once you're done trying to optimize, quote unquote, this routine and have realized that what a terrible mistake that was, please increment the following counter as a warning to the next guy. 42. <laughs> <laughs> magic do not touch so this stuff like this is some like this is our tech industry kind of growing into you know realizing you know when to use comments when not to use comments comments are strictly prohibited unless it's on an exposure layer then please go ahead and use them 
and of course on we use them kind of uh, casually on the uh, tests. That's how we go and say given, when, then, you know, you know, when we go write a test, we do that. These, these were an alternative for region. You know, you, you know, ideally someone proposed doing this, and that was horrible because regions. I actually want you to be able to see the code and make sure that your code fits in one page. If you do it this way. Now you have code above code. Like this is becoming a little bit more distracting than just saying given when then. So anyway, some people say arrange assert, um, you know, uh, arrange assert action or something like that. It, it's the same school of thought, pretty much the same school of thought. Uh, yeah, uh, we use arrange uh, act and assert mm -hmm. um, in our web API audit test project. I think I inherited this given when then back when I was writing Scala and the person that wrote that inherited it from folks that were writing in Objective C and Swift, you know, the programming languages that Apple uses to build their systems. Hmm. I think given when then is a little bit easier to understand than assert and arrange, you know, I don't know. It's it's a it's a more matching to a business language, but it's 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 a minor minor thing I, I don't really bother much with it okay so mr sam here's what we need to do we need to write just a simple test to validate i'm gonna write this test to validate that this guy is not null if this guy is passed in as null then we have a problem right so in order for that to happen i need to go under uh, uh the o expression service so we need a folder we need to organize these a little bit uh, uh let's see foundations oh by the way did i tell you about the new feature that visual studio has if you move a folder inside another folder it will update namespaces automatically for oh, you oh how cool is that like if i go like see it says oh expressions in here right it should go under foundation so if i move this over here let's see what happens ah uh, it's Nothing only happened. It's only for the yeah nothing happened. I think I think it's only for the file, Sam. Like if I pick up this file and put it under foundations like this, see, it says foundations. Mm. And now if I pick it again and put it under expression, see, when you use things in real world, you will find bugs. So if you're moving an entire folder, it's not going to work. But I also know maybe so get, that's the next feature. Maybe it's that's a, the next feature. A new feature in the next version. <laughs> so, so, so check this out. What if I do this? What if I go here and say sync? Check this out. What if I say sync namespaces? So there's a little new button in here that says sync namespaces. If I do this, ah, I fixed it. Look, it fixed it. So let's let me do this for everything first. Let me do take this. Oh, let me take this guy, this guy, and this guy, and move them all under foundations, and then go ahead and sync. Maybe that's why they did the sync thing. Let's see, sync namespaces. Oh man, this is sweet. Watch this. Let's see if it, it's going to blow up our project. That's going to be a problem. Okay. It's, it's, it's syncing the namespaces, Sam. It's doing a lot of work, actually. Value does not fall within expected range. Oh my God, what happened? <laughs> What version? What Visual Studio version? Oh, this is the preview version. Oh my mm -hmm. lord! Oh my lordy lord! Okay, all right. We don't have time for this. Let me revert that. <laughs> it, it it didn't work out so good, but uh, let's see. Delete. So okay, I reset everything, right? So this is I'm syncing here. Let's see. And now I want to basically rebuild the project just to make sure things are still working. Okay. And then let's throw away these files. Okay. Oh, expressions. So I need a, a folder in here called exceptions. And under exceptions, I need to go and say uh, null O expression exception. So the O expression is coming in as null. It's added copyrights in here. Control K E. Sam, why does Visual Studio create every new class as internal? I was just talking to a friend about this yesterday, and we were really angry with it. It's dumb. You know what I mean? 
So let's go down here, base message, <clears throat> null, all expression, error occurred. How to fix the error. Oh, just all expression is null. Yeah, that's right. All expression is null. There you go. And that's this guy. And then let's take this guy here. And then the next one that we need, we need a validation exception. So let's go here. Let's do the same. So this is O expression validation except CL. Let's go here. And then of course the keyboard cook goes crazy. Exception. There you go. And here's a validation exception, public class. There we go. CTOR takes in exception as inner exception. Sam, what do you think about the standard so far? Any comments for me? Uh, no, I haven't uh, uh, finished the reading. Okay, that's fair. It's a very big, very, very big book. It's a big book. Is that what you think? Okay, all expression, <laughs> validation, if error. If I have any comments, I will leave the comments into the Discord channel. Thank you so much. Third, uh, uh, fix the errors and try again. Okay, so this is this here is under 120. Let's take a comma, pass in the inner exception. My control space is how I wake up Visual Studio. <laughs> Give me suggestions, you know what I mean? It's so, okay. Uh, you have this logic. We need a test for validation. Let's go down here. Here's your uh, validations. And then I'm going to go down here. Let's see. And then I'm going to type in a nice test for us. I'm going to type it from scratch. Right? Think about that, Sam. So fact, public uh, async task should throw validation exception on uh, generate if o expression is null async given when then okay so we are getting in a an o expression right so this is your o expression null and this is null o expression and then we expect a null o expression exception new null o expression exception and that guy takes nothing and then var expected o expression validation exception new oh, new o expression uh, validation exception should be the same namespace there you go null o expression exception come on all expression exception like this. Here we go. And then thanks to Christo Dutui and Michael Mendelssohn, they kind of made things a little bit easier for both of us. So here is the expression and then generate O expression task. This dot service dot generate O expression of any type. So it's going to be object. We don't care. And this is null O expression. And then in here we want uh, o expression validation exception actual o expression validation exception equals assert await assert throws async and that's this this guy here right and now we have oh we could just do this guy so generate o expression task basically as task got it Okay, now we need to go and say actual O expression validation such as should be equivalent to expected O expression validation exception. And then we want to verify that our dependency has never been passed, been called. So verify uh, broker, broker dot uh, generate object, it is any string has never, ever, ever, Sam, been called times never. So that's one. Not a string, so all, ex all expression, huh? Oh. Right, because we're, pat that, that's to the broker. That's the underneath broker, right? And then in the last one here, I wanna go and say verify no other calls. So the VNL is just to tell people, 
There is none verified other calls. This one here is to just say, this is telling the story. It said, because of that issue, this call was never happen or should never happen. Control K, clone the, clean the world. And then I wanna run this guy. It should fail for all good reasons. It's gonna fail. It's gonna give us a null reference exception, but that's why, there you go. No reference, yep, there you go, NFE. All right, Sam Shoop, Sam Shoop, your turn. There is a fail. Go to town. Make sure your screen is large enough. Why sure. do you always give me a failing test? Because I love you. I love you, brother. You're my friend. <laughs> you know, by the way, writing the test is the hard part. Making it pass is easy. <laughs> <laughs> I actually I can't agree with you more. Yeah. So let's see. <coughs> okay, I pull the latest code. Yes, sir. Let's go, Sam. Share the screen. Let's make the world. Let's make make the world go round. Oh no, we were using the wrong mic. Okay, so can you still hear me now? Hi. You can still hear me, right? Yes. Yeah, that's much better. It was switching to the camera microphone. I need to disable oh. that. Again. Yeah, go ahead, my friend. So let me build and make sure it's failing. Okay. So it's fast, right? Yes, sir. It's failed. Uh, it failed. It failed for all good reasons. Yeah. So uh, all expression service. Mm. So why uh, I I can write code, but why can we use this one? Oh, this because if you mm. if you use this one, it's gonna throw a, a argument null exception. Null argument null exception. Right, null argument exception, mm. and now it it becomes non localized model. It's native. Yeah. It's not a model that you own. So your orchestration service now is dependent on on the framework instead of having truly abstract code. That's the only reason. Uh, I don't know. Let, let me write the uh, um, no or no, what's, what's no expression exception. Yep, yep. No or oh, expression exception. Hmm? It's it's up Where there. It? Go up, go under the model. There it is. Open exceptions. Open the exceptions folder. No or expression. Null O expression, except <laughs> it's very confusing because they look the same. Right? This this guy. Yes. Um, now we need to catch that and wrap it up in a O expression validation exception. Just put a try catch around the whole block. Like put a dry catch. Or if you want to do by... it. Catch. Yep, and then. Uh, o expression. Oh no, no, you want to catch the null O expression. This one. Mm hmm. So we don't need this one. We need it. We just need to categorize it. Like you have a bunch of local issues, and then you're ca categorizing them into either validation service or dependence. Uh, except, exception. Um, and now just throw new uh, O expression validation o, exception. O, exception validation. Yeah. And this is, you know, no exception. There you go. Run the test. That should work. Run the test. Yeah. This should pass. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Yes. Uh, mark this test as pass and give it back to me. I'll do a little bit of cleanup for it. <laughs> so remember this try catch Bye. noise. Do you, do you remember the try catch noise cancellation that I was telling you about? Mm -hmm. I'll show it to you in a sec here. So this is here mm -hmm. you go, Sam. So this is here by the way did you also know that visual studio can give you different colors at the top based on the project that you're in no my friend danielle just showed me that one if you go into um let's see if you go into uh preview features, uh, preview features. tabs and windows i think and then you can say colorize document tabs by project or by file extension and then you get to say, okay, the modified file, should it be marked like this? Show invisible tabs in italic. You can do a lot of things. I I don't care much for these colors unless I can control them and say, if I click this, tell me this is a broker. Tell me this is a service. Tell me this is an orchestration. Now I'm interested, you know, but just a mere kind of color based on the, I guess it's a, it's a start, Sam. Like they're mm -hmm. starting. Like it's it's a beginning, right? But it's not the final kind of thing. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do with this man. You know, you remember this, Sam, because this is what we're gonna do with other services, right? I'm gonna pull your code. So remember, we try to partialize, leverage partial classes and do kind of a try-catch pattern to noise expression. So I'm gonna copy this exact same uh, file and in that file, I'm going to make it a partial class. So this guy is going to be the exceptions file. And there will be another one, which is going to be the validations file. Normally, in some projects, they nest under each other. But in here, they don't because this is not an ASP.NET. I think it's something with the template. So now, in the exceptions area, check this out, Sam. I'm going to go here and say, take away all of this. I'm going to go and say private delegate, right? A delegate that returns a value task of O expression. Right, and I'm gonna go here and say returning O expression function, and then private async value task O expression try catch. Do you remember that guy? So in now I can kind of mute out the noise that's coming from handling too many exceptions, right? So I can now go here and say what is this control U that's returning, and then I can do try catch return await returning function return returning function like this and then i'm catching in here null o expression exception right so this is the null o expression exception and then i'm throwing it categorizing it as new o expression validation exception okay control ke here we go. And then if we go into the validation piece, we can actually write this function that you just made. So we can go here and say, you know, uh, private static void validate O expression, O expression in here. Uh, if O expression is null, throw new null O expression exception. So now, Sam, I can go back to my service here and get rid of all this. Not have to add any of that. Because now the focus, this is the beauty of this uh, exception handling noise cancellation. We can now go and say validate O expression with O expression. And then all the exceptions are going to be taken care of behind the scenes with this elegant so try catch async. Oops. There you go and there you go so now much simpler containerized so now even if you have 20 exceptions it will never change the size of your method right just like the same way we did exceptions in here see we have all of these mm. if you if you added all of these in addition to this now the code is not readable anymore the code becomes horribly hard to understand right so let me just double check and make sure that our all our tests are still passing. And then I'm going to give you another 
another failing test. What do you think about that? Do you want another failing test? Yes. <laughs> okay, Sam. All right. I'm going to just go here and say code rob use exception noise cancellation. Okay. So we're pushing this in. Pushing this in, and then here's what we're going to do, my dear friend. Uh, let's see here. I want to go and validate. Let's see, let's see, let's see. So this O expression that's coming in, what do we do with it? We need to validate pretty much everything in here. So this, mm -hmm. we use the O token on this guy. And the O token on this guy is its own thing, right? So this is... This is another thing. So I'm going to go here and write a test. Very similar test, actually. You know, we're just going to go and say um, validations. I'm going to take all of this, put it in here. But this time, if O token is null, right? So this, I'm going to create a random, uh, random, create random. O expression. Do I not have one? Let's create one for fun. So let's go here and say private stat. Oh, sorry. Private static um, filler. O expression. There you go. Uh, create a O expression filler. Right. This guy doesn't have dates or anything. So new filler O expression should suffice. And then I'm going to go at the top here and say private static O expression uh, create random O expression. In this case, we really don't care about the O expression itself. We just need a, a thing that works, right? So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to go and say create random O expression. And then in here, I'm going to go and say this is going to be called random O expression. Mm. And then we're going to have O expression here, which is invalid O expression from random. And then this invalid O expression token, O token will be null. So now instead of null O expression exception, it'll be null O expression O token exception. It's a property on that guy, right? So I'm going to take go here and I'm going to go here and I'm going to go and say here is your class is your copyright and here is a public class and actually instead of doing that we're going to go and say invalid o expression exception that's better and this invalid O expression exception will inherit from exception. And we're basically going to go and say, what are we going to say, Sam? We're going to say CTOR uh, base message valid O expression error occurred. Occurred. Fix the errors. Try again. Okay, and this guy doesn't take anything. Property, if I do the control minus and go back here, uh, I should be. Okay, this is invalid O expression. And this in here is going to be invalid O expression like this. And then invalid O expression dot uh, date uh, dot uh, add. Uh, let's see. Uh, mm -hmm. Did I did I did I define this as uh, inheritor of exception? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is invalid. Oh, this guy here, invalid expression dot add data. Right, and the key here, the key here, Sam, is name of. Right, o expression dot o token. And the values in here is going to be value is required. So you can't give me a an o token that doesn't have the right information in it. The rest should be just what's the purpose of add the add date? Add data? Add data? Yeah. So you can add a whole bunch of validation rules. Like you can add a whole bunch of things. You know the problem details? Like for instance, when you have a student, look at this Sam. Let's say you have a student and this student has 
a name, age, uh, 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 date of birth, uh, grade, right? You want to be able to go and add all the errors, all the problems that happened within that model, right? So you would see in 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 in, uh, in restful operations, they call this a problem details. And let me just show you a quick example of it. I introduced this a while back. So here we go. So this is, let's go to YouTube. Let's go to uh, my channel videos. Mm -hmm. And probably somewhere in a cul-de-sac pattern, okay? And then you have the cul-de-sac, cul-de-sac pattern, processing services. Uh, let's see, validations, validation, transcending ADI problem details. Watch this. So when you add this, Sam, you know, there is a piece in here. Look at the errors that are going to come out here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change some things. Watch this. See, it says ID is required, content text is required, author ID is required. So it's collecting a detail of the problems that are happening, right? And if you go into, let me show you here. I hope I put the link in here. Uh, standardized with that, so test driving, localized. Okay. So if you look at uh, RESTful, REST API standard problem details, you want to be able to deliver a problem detail response that reflect the problems that you're trying to, to represent. See how you go and say, here's all the issues that are happening in your request, right? It needs to be an array of arrays, right? This is not even the standard. Where's the standard? Is it this one? This is the RESTful API ISO standard for this. Just a second, I'll, I'll find it for you. Yeah, there it is. See how they say name, age, reason must be blah. You can add whatever validation rules you need for every single property in your system. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Do you think that's a good idea? What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here is here's this here is the IETF problem details for HTTP APIs. This is the proposed standard. Right, and that was done 2016, and here is what they had. See, you have accounts. Here's all the problems with all your accounts, and then they basically said and start talking about this is what does that. This exceptions with a bunch of parameters like these. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, my friend. Let's see if I can just give you this failing test. Yeah, this this should do this should do just fine. So if I run this, this is gonna throw like a null reference exception or something stupid like that let's see here we go and this is throwing oh object filler is missing the type expression not registered oh it doesn't know how to okay so that's that's a good point sometimes some types are not registered and it doesn't know what to do with them right so filler filler setup on type expression which we don't really need in here um o expression no no it's the native expression because remember o expression has a thing that's it's carrying inside oh. right and we probably need to think about this as a native model we'll see on type i'll just say ignore it and then return the filler because we don't need it in this case so let's go back here and run this let's go and go Okay, so is this guy failing? Yeah, null reference exception. There you go. Sam, take this. Go to town. Can you make it pass? Fail. Let's go. No, I cannot. You cannot. No problem. <laughs> All right. Switching over to you. All right. Full latest until. <laughs> so, well, need to build. Did you sell this one? Yeah. Oh. So just pull latest. Yeah, I did. Oh, now rebuild. I, I did. So it's it's successful, but it's, it's a red line. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. I think it's good related to the intelligence. Um. So, all tokens now with exception is invalid or expression, uh, or expression exception. So back to the uh, expression service here. Mm -hmm. 
um yeah so if o exception dot o token is now mm -hmm. let's salute new invalid o exception and then you need to add no you're not gonna just throw it so there is there is a thing that you can do here right mm -hmm. just fix it the way you like just create a new one and then add data to it so just type var invalid o expression exception equal new invalid o expression exception and then add that data to it the report Var mm -hmm. uh, invalid in invalid o expression exception mm -hmm. o exception exception or expression expression exception it's too early for you sam you're falling asleep let's go son <laughs> why should we do like this one i'll tell you because we're going to collect collect errors right so now inside that guy inside this um this one this in, one inside the if statement go ahead and just type in invalid o expression exception and then dot upsert upsert you can do add data as well if you want yep uh-huh and then add in the key and the value, just like the test. That's the key. It's a key. It's a key. A key is a key is a key. Why? Yep, and we need the value, which value. is going to be. Yeah, the value is going to be value exactly the same error message. But yeah. why is the value to be say token? You can make it O token if you want, but it's already saying O token. Like it's going to show this. This is needed. Like, do you see that name of? It's gonna show that for you. But that's okay. Fine. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So now, now take a new line and type in invalid, or you can throw it. Yeah, go for it. You don't need that anymore, right? Yeah. Throw. I'll show you. I'll show you a way we do it. Now we need to catch that exception, Sam. So go into the exceptions uh, file. Just like we did with null, except that this time it's going to be uh, invalid or exception, invalid or. There you go. Same this thing. One. Yep. Okay, let's go. Uh... Going yet? Here we go. Should go green. Show green. Green, Should... green. <laughs> green, green. Green, green. Let's go. Yeah. Ah. Good. <laughs> Yeah. There you go. Give it back to me. <clears throat> so here's the I like deal. This, set. I like this ping pong. See? Do you like fair programming? <laughs> See, this is how I this is how I run my team. This is how I build every project. I don't write wow. code by myself. <laughs> you use this style to build every project? Everything. Everything, Sam. Like if you look my uh my team in the mixed reality. We don't do things on our own. We have to pair program all the time. And this helps the team get together, love each other, get to know each other. You know, it's not anymore these isolated folks just sitting alone remotely, not knowing who's working on what and all that. But let me, uh, okay. Go ahead. Tell me. Go. Um, switch to my screen. Okay, switching over to your screen. So, mm. so we are um, uh, here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, validation. Yeah. 
So we we validate all token here. Yeah. But I have another uh different opinion. What is it? So all token belong to all expression. Yes. So I think we sh should uh we can move the validation to all expression class. So like the model? Yes. Um mm. So it this seems um, uh -huh. if we if customer build uh, all expression, uh -huh. he takes the responsibility to make sure all token is valid. So uh -huh. um, what I'm thinking is um, token. Uh -huh. So. Um, maybe I don't. Why it's not working, by the way? Is it bang bang? Try bang bang, not just one, but two. Yes. No, maybe. it's not happening. But uh, I'm using also using the preview. Yeah, 2020 preview. Yeah, it should preview. work. Um, so it's anyway. a collect the syntax. Yeah, anyway, tell me what you have. So, so you want I to mean, put the validation we, in the we model. We shouldn't so. take validation here. Uh -huh. So do something. So do argument. Um. Um. Argument null exception. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Uh -huh. uh, name of token. Okay. Um, New, no, yeah. So in this pattern, so we don't need to uh, uh, validate all token here because if all expression itself is valid, all token property is valid. So otherwise, we we don't need we can't. Uh, uh, Build the O expression. So if we receive a instance of O expression, it means O token is valid on this instance. Right. So that's my my point. Yeah. So it means if you build an O expression, uh, because O O token is required on O expression, right? Yeah. So if you build a uh, O expression, please you should uh, give a uh, give me a uh, O token. Otherwise, we cannot build a uh, O expression because O token is required to build the O expression. Okay. What do you think about this pattern? But it's it, it's it's a different opinion, so we can. No, no, no. I hear you. I think mm -hmm. I think you're up to something. But there's two concerns here. Two mm -hmm. concerns. The number one concern, O expression is an internal model. It doesn't actually go to your actual external customer, right? It might be at some point in time, but O expression is being like O token is being built based on another foundation service downstream, which yes. is the O token service, yeah. right? So, so the builder of this O expression is actually an orchestration service. It's not us. It's, it's not a customer. Okay, yep. so there's that number one thing. Number two thing, we want we want a separation of categorical concern. What that basically means is that there are models that do work, there are models that carry data, and there are third models that carry configurations. Say that again. So that there are three models, three yeah. times. There's models that only carry data. Carry data. Doesn't have any intelligence in it. It just carries data, right? What's an yeah. example of it? Like a piece of paper. You have a piece of paper. The paper has ink, just words on it, right? It mm -hmm. doesn't print anything. The paper doesn't have any printing in it, right? Yeah. But you, but you take that paper and you put it in a printer, which is the equivalent of a service, right? Yeah. And now yeah. that printer, that paper, the printer is doing the action and the paper is just being received, recipient of that action. Yes, I still agree with you. Okay. But that's for the action. 
for the property itself, uh, uh -huh. it, it just like an uh, example like this one. Um, uh -huh. So what, think, what do you think about a student? So for example, a student, Sam. <laughs> yes, Sam. Yeah. So most of the time we can say, um, uh, build a student. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But what's the student's name here? So you build a student without the name. You can't. You, <laughs> it's built, right? Yeah, it's built. Yes, yes. So, um, so we can do like this one. We can say, uh, Sam. It's okay. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so build a student as I'm a name. But most of the time, we forget this one. It shows yeah. the name of student is now. It it's a look. It looks a weird. But but wait um, wait 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 mm -hmm. wait. A baby is born first, and then they're given a name. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a baby, but we are talking about the student. <laughs> baby is oh. not a student. <laughs> okay. A per student people. is created and then assigned the name. Yeah. P person. 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 So we can do like this one. What I'm thinking is um or maybe student. Um yeah. So we have a name if a baby. So we have the baby out. So yep. let's create a baby and, and give, then give, give it the name. Name. We are born in this world with no properties, and then their properties come back later. <laughs> Could I agree with you? That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> it's object oriented, no, right? We are born with. Um, <laughs> first, we have the. Uh, color, color, yeah, the yes, uh, the skin color, yes, and uh, maybe we are born from uh, gender, yes, by male or female, or something like this, yes, but um, but the gender is just a class, like person, male, person, female, <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> you mean that using the subclass. Yeah. Is so a male person and a female person? Yeah. <laughs> mm, okay. <laughs> but wait. Also, a baby is born blue. Every baby is born blue. And then color comes after. So you have you will be have you will have false baby. So you have a good experience, but at my side, I only have one daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I senior, cannot see your dad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so so we can uh, let our community to share their feedback yeah. about that. Community, so a, share your feedback. Yes, absolutely. It's a good topic for that. Absolutely, Sam. Sam, Sam, do you like our discussions? Do you like our discussions? Yeah. Our discussions are okay, right? Yes. I like our I like our discussions too. So here's here's the deal, my friend. Um mm -hmm. let's wrap up. Okay. Yeah. And 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 on Friday, I'm gonna simplify this validation logic. You know, we take that validation logic, we create a simple 10 liner business rules engine. Um as usual, Sam, it's 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 always um such an honor and a pleasure to to work with you brother and you know this is the most this is the most beautiful thing about o data it's, it's not the, it's not the product it's the journey how we get there you know all all the friendships that we made all the people that we talked to all the things that we've done together all the discussions that's my product o data o data will come one way or another you know and maybe ten, Maybe ten years from now, someone is coming, gonna come in and say, "Oh, data Neo too, right?" 
It might not be you and me, but you and I, we won friends. We made friends out of this. And that's that's what matters to me the most out of all of this. Um, thank you so much again. And of course, for the people watching us, you know, give us your feedback. You know, this is a good point. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or compliments, of course, from Mr. Sam here, you know, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in another video. Thank you, Sam. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. So